today the message is from um, the Parashat Tzav, and it was written by Mauricio Quintero, and I will read the translation in English. And the title is Transforming the Mundane into the Extraordinary. Now, our portion this week, Tzav, means to order or command. And it would seem that the name challenges us, challenges us to go beyond logic, since it asks us to perform certain activities that a proud, apathetic, or defiant heart could not carry out. So let's take a look. First, does it make sense to offer to God something that already belongs to him? In Psalm 2411, it says that God created the world and everything in it. So what's the point of us bringing an animal to sacrifice to him, to which he gave the breath of life? Or does it make sense to offer fine, fine flour and inert material as if God could be satisfied with loaves of bread? At first, at first glance, other religions created by men offered living beings to appease their gods. And in some cases, they even offered their children and sacrificed themselves in the name of these gods. So what's the difference? Well, I believe that it's in the intention. God established an ordered system of rituals focused on eliminating the religious culture imposed in Egypt in which only the religious castes could approach God, not ordinary men. Their gods had no time for mere mortals, and the only way that they could relate to the divine was by appeasing their desires through the natural senses expressed through sexual behavior, self-flagellation, cruelty towards animal, or the shedding of blood. Instead, God brought a groundbreaking revolution telling man, I believe in you and you may relate to me. And by relating to me, you may reach your maximum potential in life. Wow. That is why the rituals taught in the Torah are intended to enable man to draw closer, korban, kerev, to the eternal, to become a better version of himself. How can we be better? How can we be better? It's based through our desire to approach divinity. God is always near, and we can approach him as expressed in the five korbanot. The ula, which is translated usually as burnt offering, but it's really the offering that elevates us. The mincha, which is, was the fine flour, the grain offering. The Korban Shalamim, where we seek to foster peace. Shalamim, like Shalom. Or in the Korban Chata'a, to free us from our present or past mistakes. Or the Korban Asham, which was to free us from guilt. The reason doesn't matter. The important thing is to draw closer to God. Now, with this, we can better understand what the writer of the letter to the Hebrews wrote in chapter 416, when he says, Therefore, let us draw near to the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace in times of need. Do you know that? Do you know what the problem is for people today? Nobody wants to draw close to God. This expression is captured by our prophet Isaiah in chapter 55, 6 to 8, where he wrote, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts and let him return to God, the, to the Lord, who will have mercy on him and to our God who will be generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor my, your ways are my ways, says the Lord. If we think about it, when does God ever stop being close or able to be found? Never. He holds and contains everything. We are the ones who by our actions 
stop seeking him. But he's always there. He's always close at hand. Then why don't we look for him? Because we don't want to draw close. But why? Approaching God implies certain conditions that are described in this portion, which leads to my second point. To perform their divine service, the Kohanim had to dress with honor and repeat certain seemingly useless jobs every single day. But obedience and doing them with the proper intention elevated the Kohen while they were pleasing to God. We read in Vayikra 6, 3 to 4, And the Kohen shall put on his linen tunic and shall also put linen trousers over his flesh. He will separate the ashes to which the burnt offering that was on the altar was reduced by fire, and he will put it next to the altar. Then he will take off his clothes and put on other clothes and carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. Can you imagine wearing white clothes, which would get filthy with the ashes? Would you wear fine white clothes to clean out your garbage can? The message is very simple. As Rabbi Moshe Cordovero says, this is equivalent to emulating the heart of God. When we take out the trash, our house is cleaner. The Eternal does the same, making living in his house more agreeable and pleasant. We can take out the garbage with gratitude, or we can think about the way that God cleans out our garbage, that is our transgressions and with its consequences. By doing this task of removing this waste material, we can imitate God's graciousness. In short, this simple act of removing ashes is like transforming a mundane act into a blessing. And that's when the physical world becomes the spiritual one. To come to this understanding, we must serve God with joy. How can we take turning? How can we turn taking the garbage out of this world into a blessing? What activities do we consider to be like taking out the trash? And how could we turn them into a service that elevates the divine name? That's really important to think about. Later, we learn another command in Vayikra 6, 5 to 6. And the fire that is on the altar will remain burning. It will not be quenched, but the Kohen will burn wood on it every morning and arrange the burnt offering on it and cause the fat of the shalamim, the peace offerings, to be consumed. The esh tamid, the perpetual fire, must burn on the altar. It must not go out. While it's true that this was done for obvious reasons, so that the offerings were constantly burning, and it was necessary to continue putting wood on the altar so that the fire and heat would not go down, it has a deeper meaning. On the one hand, what is fire? According to Rabbi Nossen Weiss, fire represents the driving force in man. It is that energy that allows us to move, to function. Furthermore, fire is an element that is physically visible. It reveals the sacred fire of God and can turn physical elements into smoke, which was a pleasing aroma to God. So when we serve, like putting the, on the firewood, which is strenuous work, and not pleasant for the Kohanim because it involves such physical exertion, as well as being exposed to the heat, we elevate an uncomfortable task and turn it into something sacred. I was wondering how I could elevate myself through the use of my daily energy. How can I turn this driving force into something with a greater purpose? For example, when I prepare a talk for the Tuesday night group, or when I spend time with my parents and listen to them, these require 
physical energy. These activities are like adding wood to the fire. Then fire also require, requires air, ruach, which is expressed through our thoughts. When we try to connect to the infinite, messages are transferred to our brain in the form of thoughts that feed the divine fire. Now, fire comes from heaven. We see this in Devarim 4, 2, 424, where it says, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire. This fire does not come from physical things or things that are ours. We see this clearly when Elijah placed water on his offering in front of all the pagan priests and God consumed everything on the altar. We saw that in 1 Kings 18, 21 to 45. We also see it in Vayikra 9, verse 24, where he says, fire came out of the presence of God and consumed everything that was on the altar for the inauguration of the services in the Mishkan. But what I love most about this image is that fire also consumes fat. And fat represents our ego, arrogance, our pride. Finally, I'd like to emphasize that apart from the Kohanim, all the offerings mentioned here apply to all the people, including the leaders. I love this because today's leaders lack the humility needed to present themselves before God. They don't understand that they fulfill a role, that they are special. Kohelet Ecclesiastics 7.20 says, There's certainly no righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. We all make mistakes and we all have faults. It's in our nature. And it doesn't matter what our social, economic, or intellectual status is, what is important is how we respond. Do we approach God confidently or do we turn away, run and hide like Adam and Eve or Cain did? In chapter 6, verse 2 of this portion, we read, He haola al mokeda al misbeach kol halayla ad haboker. The burnt offering will remain burning on the altar all night until morning. The word mokeda, which is flame or pyre, in the Torah is written with a smaller mem at the beginning, which according to the Rebbe, Rebbe of Kotz means that the fire of God must burn within us. But it must be minimized with the intention of avoiding arrogance and pride on the outside. The fire within allows us to maintain our humility. And when we understand how small we are, we can achieve greatness. Tzav is a call to be humble because the humble are cared for by God, <clears throat> as we read in Psalms 138.6. My desire is that our acts of obedience go beyond our ability to reason, that we act with humility and transform each physical act into elements that elevate the divine name. Shabbat Shalom.